we're at IAV 2019 and I'm speaking to Sylvain Louisier, VP International, Brentronics. Uh, Sylvain, batteries. Um, I guess the, the key question is rechargeable or not rechargeable? Um, which is the way to go on the battlefield? Well, uh, you know, Brentronics has been in, in this uh, business and technology for now 46 years. And uh, so we are really at the origin of many batteries and rechargeable batteries for military applications. Now, for almost 20 years, 90% of our production is rechargeable batteries. Why is that? We see a big trend in the, the overall or usage and organization in the different international armies to go for rechargeable because first we have the same or very similar capacity running time compared to non-rechargeable and obviously we can recharge and reuse the batteries for many 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 cycles between 300, 500, to up to a thousand cycles. So to an overall cost of possession, it makes sense to move for rechargeable. But you need a logistic chain. You need the chargers, you need uh, all the ways to recharge the batteries. So uh, that, that, that implies a kind of change in some organization in different armies. And so we, still, we are still at the, uh, the edge between rechargeable and non-rechargeable today. I can give you some examples, for instance, in the German army or the French armies. Every new program now is based on rechargeable batteries radio communication systems, uh, jammers, uh, soldier worn systems. It's only based on rechargeable batteries today. But there are still in the inventory and still in, in operation some uh, former technologies using non-rechargeable. And when we talk of rechargeable batteries, what, what's the chemical makeup of, of the standard rechargeable battery, if indeed there is a standard rechargeable battery? Well, the, uh, the technology used for rechargeable batteries is really based on the commercial uh, products or commercial components. You know, when we talk about lithium-ion cells, rechargeable lithium-ion cells, we are mainly talking about the 18650 standard that came from the laptop industry, for instance. And all the, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the change or all the uh, improvements in technology over the years were driven by the commercial industry. Today, we have a capacity that double compared to 10 years ago. And the challenge is really to get more and more capacity in a reduced size, lighter weight, so really to ensure the mission, the, the, the mission profile. So, uh, lithium, it's based on lithium ion uh, chemistry like your phone or like any other uh, any other uh, modern on uh, new applications but then we have the constraints of military standard and so the goal is really to package to control the uh, the, the power flows the the energy in it to make it safe first for the user and reliable and to last very long long time and perhaps this is a very simple question to ask, but not necessarily a very simple question to answer. What's the life expectancy of a rechargeable? It really depends on the applications, I would say. You, you cannot get a single answer to this question. The uh, typical cycle uh, given for by the mill standard, for instance, that's 500 cycles. But what is a cycle? I mean, is it a f completely discharged battery and recharge, or is it 10 times 10% discharge, recharge? So I would say it's more as long as the battery used by the operator meets his mission, then it works. So that means also that a battery could have several uh, lives over its, uh, its availability in the inventory. In some armies, for instance, they use brand new batteries for two years, so up to 90% of the initial capacity. And then they are assigned more for training usage and then instructions. So a battery can have several applications, several life over his overall uh, stay in the inventory. 
And, and when we talk of rechargeable batteries, are, are we looking solely at applications like radios, tactical laptops, or, or are we looking at bigger things like uh, rechargeables f for military vehicles, as in starting applications? Well, uh, if we are here at the International Armored Vehicle, that's because we are also now introducing this rechargeable lithium-ion technology into military vehicles. Why is that? Because the vehicles now are no longer just a way to bring troops, material from one point to another or to fight. That becomes a sensor on the overall uh, digital digitalization of uh, the battlefield, you know. And so each vehicle requires more and more energy to power all the sensors they have. The radio communication, yes, but also weapon system, jammers, detections, radars. And on top of that, with the modern mission of uh, dismounted soldiers, the soldiers inside the vehicles also needs to recharge the overall system. So the, the vehicle becomes a very uh, high demand energy platform on the battlefield. And so we are uh, starting this business because uh, the lithium ion technology bringing four to five times more energy than regular lead acid batteries can solve a lot of issues they have on the vehicles like the payload like the volume the fast charger uh, charging uh, capability of lithium and all those things together makes it really the battery for the, of the vehicle of the 21st century uh, and one would assume when, when we speak of charging the rechargeable battery um, that, that in this day and age w uh, that can be done solar panels? Well, so char recharging, uh, rechargeable batteries mean a way to recharge. And, and so there are different, of course, uh, power sources available and uh, very trendy and uh, what, what, uh, what is pushed by many armies, more especially in uh, NATO, for instance, that's uh, renewable energies. So all the charging, the chargers are compatible with standard AC, DC inputs. And then we also introduce special um, co conversions, special ways to connect those chargers for renewable energies, like solar panels, flexible solar panels, wind turbines, fuel cells based on methanol. And so the goal is to have a, a charger able to take any power sources. When we look at, uh, for instance, the, where the, um, the operations are taking place right now, I mean in uh, sub-Saharan stripes, in the Middle East, etc., that's obviously very, uh, very sunny uh, areas, and it really makes sense now to get solar power to recharge the batteries, and even we're extending this concept for camps, for larger systems, for common posts, common control, and so we can have a complete hybrid system with diesel generators, storage, uh, energy storage by lithium ion batteries, and hybrid renewable energy from uh, solar systems. Excellent, thank you very much indeed.